There's a problem that every traveler struggles with. Our world is full of overrated travel destinations. You know, the kind of places that every blogger writes about and where people have to wait hours in line to take a photo with some special rock or a building. But how can we, as simple visitors, distinguish true wonders of the world from expensive tourist traps? Is the question that always remains the same. I'm not gonna lie, as we were driving north towards the world-famous Lofoten Islands, I was oblivious to what was waiting for us there. Arctic Circle in two kilometers! Don't get me wrong, we had spent hours on researching the place, reading blogs and watching videos. But would you trust information that praises this location as the best place in the world, yet fails to mention that locals are leaving the islands due to over-tourism and more extremely, even had to rename one of their small woodlands into Forest of Poop due to its close proximity to a popular hiking trail. With thousands of people hiking the trail each day, you can probably guess why it needed a new name. Yes, we definitely had our doubts about this adventure. Yet after hearing from local friends, that in September there are not that many tourists there anymore, we still decided to go, unaware of the surprises ahead. And I would say that our journey to Lofoten properly started in the small town of Bodø. Bodø is the place where ferries begin their journey towards the islands. And as soon as we made it to the port, we were properly shocked. It's pretty crazy, this waiting line over there, their ticket costs 75 euros. And our line, zero. And we're going like a few kilometers away from each other. Yes, you heard correctly. The five hour ferry to a less visited island called Vare was totally free due to a most unexpected reason. As this ferry line doesn't have enough passengers throughout the year, Norway wants to make this island more desirable for locals, which also means boosting tourism in summertime. It sounded unreal. They want to boost tourism in Lofoten, a place that has struggled with over-tourism for years. But still, saving nearly $100 on a ferry ticket was a nice surprise. Our boat arrived when the sun had already set, and in the morning, we wasted no time to start with the thing most people visit these islands for. We have made it to Varoy Island, and heading to what on a clear day is probably one of the most iconic hikes in this region. But at the moment, the peaks are all in the clouds, so we'll see what's gonna come out of it. As we started our ascent on a steep mountainside, it quickly became obvious why so many hikers from all over the world wish to visit this place. The views here are truly unique. And the lack of nutrition combined with rough climate have created an ecosystem like no other. In case you want to follow me, this is how I look from behind. And then, of course, there are the mountains. Rising from the sea, making you question the meaning of the word beauty. Because who in their rightful mind could have imagined that an environment so cold and hostile can at the same time be so elegant and mesmerizing? What an incredible place! On most days, up top there is the main attraction. You have a view into the abyss and the both islands, but today it's just totally inside a cloud. I'm just happy that we came on this hike because it has been very, very, very cloudy the whole day. And now it's a tiny bit better and we are having fun. What is the point of hiking? Eating food and 
prettier place. Well, and then Norway's weather decided to show us for the first time how quickly things can change here. About two minutes later, we could eat like 10 of those sweet thingies and then this happened. It escalated very, very quickly. It's time to go down. <laughs> it's cold, it's rainy. Yeah, in this part of the world, the best way to predict the weather is to always carry a rain jacket. The second half of the day, we spent in our van, hiding from the weather. And come nightfall, took another free ferry, this time to a much more known port called Moskenes. Once again, we arrived at night. And when we started our day early next morning, it was hard to contain my emotions. I have traveled the world for more than eight years, driven what are often claimed as the most gorgeous roads in the world. Yet this small highway I saw here, simply connecting few small fishing villages, took my breath away. At around 8.30, we had made it. We are now heading to a famous hike called Reinebringen. Why I know it's famous is because on Google Maps, instead of just the name, it has the circle, the picture. And when our friends told us about this, this hike, they said it's, it's a few stairs to the top of a viewpoint. In my head, it's like a second floor diner that you take like 15 steps and you're up there. We're gonna see how this one looks. Ha! Like I said, a few steps, only 1.1 kilometers more. And so our journey began, one step after another. It quickly became clear that I had strongly underestimated the challenge. It took us a good one and a half hours to climb the 2,000 steps to the top. I'm out of steam. Out of steam. And I'm steaming. But after getting the first glimpse of the view that was waiting for us, our bodies quickly filled with dopamine and all the tiredness disappeared. Starting this hike early in the morning was the best thing to do, as even in September, all the parking spots around the place fill up quickly and by midday, it gets very, very crowded up here. As we haven't had breakfast yet, because Joe thought it would be nice to have 2,000 steps before breakfast, uh, then now we hopefully gonna get some coffee. Next up, we found ourselves in a small bakery in a town called O. The bread baked here is still done in the old-fashioned way, in a wood oven and combined with a warm cup of coffee. It made a perfect breakfast. It's called Canel Snur. <laughs> it means cinnamon roll. O itself was a lovely little village with beautiful houses and calm atmosphere. It's a super beautiful day to be in the Lofoten. It's just like exactly as you see in the pictures. The sun is shining, it's beautiful. The houses look like from postcards. For centuries, it used to be a small fishing village. But now, for obvious reasons, it mainly focuses on tourism. Yet to this day, it is possible to go fishing here. And here on display, we have the amazing Norwegian fishermen's outfit. But as the prices of fishing tours start from hundreds of euros, it wasn't quite in our budget. But of course, for those interested, besides hiking, such angling tours are very popular activity in Lofoten. In this small town, we also started to realize the problem that many locals have with the hordes of tourists. I, I can show you just a regular parking lot. Even in September, most parking spaces were full. It's like 80% camper vans. And I can't even imagine how it looks in June and July, when there is times more visitors and finding parking 
can feel like a mission impossible. Due to interesting wildlife and the midnight sun, summer days bring thousands of visitors each day. Polar day, or the so-called midnight sun, can be experienced on Lofoten from late May to mid-July. And our local friends even laughed at us for being modestly two months late. It says museum, but I hope it's a trash can. I put my trash in there. Yet the current time, September, gives visitors another reason to stay up way past midnight. A nature spectacle only the lucky ones have had a chance to see. A thing most of us have in our bucket list. We were in the right place at the right time, but what wasn't on our side was the weather. During the days, the clouds and rain didn't bother us much. We spent time experiencing the local culture. I never knew Norway to be a huge cheese nation, but maybe I was wrong. And we're, we're gonna go ahead and test it out. There are dozens of shops and farms like this cheese factory on Lofoten. And trying the local produce is definitely a huge part of visiting this place. From halloumi to goat milk blue cheese. Not only was it delicious, but I also feel that supporting such small businesses is my duty as a tourist. Locals are the ones that feel the impact of visitors the most, and the least we can do is to give back to the community. You like them scratches. Well, and when on some days the rain decided to take a day off, we did more hikes. Another day, another hike. Each of them has its own characteristic sometimes leading you to cold, isolated beaches. The water does look very blue and beautiful, but <laughs> I'm not gonna go swimming here. Yet on others, through mountain passes and gorgeous wetlands. And what we found was that the less traveled paths were often even more beautiful than the popular routes. You'd have to know that the Joe evaluates uh, hikes depending on how beautiful it is and how empty they are. Just like a side remark. Yes, if there's no people, you get extra two points out of ten. What's the main point, point of hiking? To eat food in a prettier place. Yet, what didn't seem to change was the fact that every night like clockwork, the clouds gathered above us like a thick blanket, hiding the stars and the sky. The numbers are showing that the whole night sky should be full of colors at the moment. We kept looking at the graphs and forecast for days, and one night even caught the glimpse of green from a small hole in a cloud coverage. Yet after five days like this, it's been raining for days now just like this, we were ready to give up. But little did we know that the night sky had a surprise for us just one day later. As we were leaving Lofoten, we realized that together with the cloudy weather, autumn had arrived. It's an incredible sight seeing how forests give up their green summer dress and ready themselves for the long winter ahead. And while taking in all of this beauty, we couldn't help but wonder about their previous week. These islands are truly one of the kind. Yes, the prices here can be quite high and crowds overwhelming at times. But if you time your journey well and respect the local ways of life, the outcome can be simply unforgettable. And then, just as we had made our peace, it happened. On one special night, the clouds decided it was finally time to leave. And it was magical. This is crazy. It was Lisu's first time seeing the Northern Lights. <laughs> it's literally like somebody turned on the lights. But it was so big over the sky and, and, and I, I, I just like ran back to the car. Like I was crying because I was so excited. We spent hours looking at the sky without a single thought in our mind. 
even the cold weather didn't bother us. And if you're still wondering if visiting the Lofoten is overrated or actually worth it, then no picture or video is going to give you a clear answer. This place can be rough and unpredictable. Yet if you're lucky, it really is one of the most beautiful locations in our whole planet. Friends, thank you for watching. And if you wish to visit Norway yourself, make sure to watch this video next to make planning your journey as cheap and easy as possible.